next up, guys, uh, is Mr. Harry here. So a couple of words about Harry. So we've been hearing a lot of like, this is how marketing should be done. This is a guy who's been doing it in his own way. So um, Harry, in uh, my uh, completely uh, inaccurate uh, um, yet uh, opinionated impression is, is he came out of the woodworks. Nobody knew about this guy and suddenly Look at him. He's got a mass following. He's got a huge Twitter following. He's posting actionable content. He's cr if you're a part of uh, lots of Facebook groups, you see how he's cross cross promoting along uh, across lots of uh, groups his content and it works because it's good. So Harry's uh, going to tell us how he does it. Uh, so Harry, you ready to go? Uh, can you hear me, kids? Can you hear me, Pat? Yeah, can hear you All great. Right. So stage is yours, man. Uh, sweet. I'm just trying to get the uh, <laughs> the slideshow up. One second. Uh, share a Google Doc. Uh, I think I've done that already. Um, I'm gonna go with the good old share screen and see see how we go from here. Uh, your entire screen. How have I? So Pep, if my slides are in, how do I get them again? How do I access them? <laughs> uh you should yeah share your screen the the arrow the it's arrow the button reason if you click on it share screen and then you can choose the screen i've got it i've got it i've got it i've got it <laughs> we're in brilliant uh all right sweet sorry about that everybody um are we seeing are you seeing what i'm seeing Double chat, we're good before I start. Sorry for this. Uh, we get it. Uh, good, good to do. We see it. All right, sweet. One second, I'm just going to get back there. <laughs> I, I hope the presentation is a little bit smoother than, than this. Present. All right, okay. So, uh, yeah, I, I have definitely not got the experience with flow, with the flow. Um, but I'm going to talk about how I grew my newsletter to 53,000 uh, subscribers in 20 months. Uh, so two years ago, as Pep said, I was actually a web developer, and I was really interested in, in marketing. So I started writing these case studies online, and I got a sponsor. People seemed to like them. So I left my job and went um, full-time on it. And um, here's the website, marketingexamples.com. Uh, how do you grow a newsletter? Well, I think it can be overcomplicated to touch. I think, essentially, um, you need two things to happen. You need people to see your work. Uh, and you need people to to, to convert, and that's that's signups. Uh, so, firstly, the first ten minutes of the talk, um, we're going to think. Well, first five minutes, however long, we're going to focus on getting getting people. How how do how do you get your content out there? Second half is going to be how uh, how can you improve conversion? Now, I'm just going to double check that people are hearing me okay because um, I cannot see anything right now. Just just a little bit nervous about getting this right. Uh, love the exciting way to go. Oh, we hear you. Thank you, Annabelle. Um, back to it. Uh, that'll be the last time. <laughs> I didn't want to do the whole thing, and um, and no one hear any of it. So, uh, so yeah. How how do you get people to see your work? Well, when I started in, in marketing, I didn't really know. So I had this website which no one was visiting, marketing examples, and I thought, how can I how can I get you know build attention for it? So I slowly but surely put together like a landscape or watering holes, as I I call them of all the places where marketers hang out on, online. So loads of Facebook groups I found, Twitter, obviously, LinkedIn, um, Designer News, Indie Hackers, a uh, bunch of Slack groups, and uh, Reddit forums. And then I thought to myself, um, no one's reading my website at the moment. So what about if I could somehow take my articles, my content, and share them where there's loads of marketers bu buzzing around the ocean, <laughs> like, like fish? Um, so. I yeah, found all the places where marketers hang out and, and I thought, how can I add value directly to these platforms? Um, now, adding value isn't uh, just dropping a link on Twitter. You know, I was a nobody, still I'm a nobody, no one's going to click that link. So how do you do it slightly more imaginatively? And it's not rocket science. Essentially, um, I like to say people are busy, so you've got to wow them where they're already at. So what I did is I'd write these articles and um, I would write them out on my website, but then also in full on Twitter as threads, um, on Reddit, 
on the different subreddits on Entrepreneur as a full article, and then on Indie Hackers, on Facebook groups, literally everywhere, I would just put the article. Um, I had to like get the name, get the word out somehow. And then at the end of each article, I would say, hey, I thought this was good. Well, you might like the newsletter I write. I write it twice a month, um, subscribe. Slowly but surely, the, the, the email started, started ticking up. Um, and then, sorry, one sec. And then I thought to myself, well, I'm kind of doing this on Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, Reddit kind of pretty well. But what about, sorry, not LinkedIn, but, but what about if I did it on Instagram and LinkedIn as well? So again, exactly the same principle. I would take the content I wrote and just tailor it to uh, to these different platforms. So Instagram, I would use slideshows. LinkedIn, I would use I'd use slideshows. Um, and um, there's no one size fits all uh, method of, of sharing content. Essentially, I would yeah just tailor it to to the platform. Uh, Facebook groups is a little bit harder because you can't really share a full article. So I, I made all these quick tips. I made and the beautiful thing about about images is that you can kind of share them anywhere because all platforms are really suited to, to images. So uh, this is the SaaS Growth Hacks Facebook group and I would just share the uh, the tip I made. This one's about copywriting, I think. Uh, instead of saying the world's first digital media player, uh, um, every song you've ever owned in your pocket, no one cares what you can do, everyone cares what you can do for them. And then I, I'd um, just mentioned the slide at the bottom, slowly but surely, I started getting a bit of traction with this sharing pro process. Um, so then six months later, with a bit of experience, I realized essentially this diagram explains explains all. You, you create value, which is a bit of a cliche word, but it's probably the easiest one to use, on all these different places. Uh, you, you transfer them to your article, your website, and then your subscriber, your email subscribers, is where you store the value. Um, why email? So uh, let's say someone comes to market examples once. The chances are they'll probably forget about it, probably won't return. But if you can capture them as an email subscriber, then you've you've got that direct line into them uh, whenever you like, really. Um, I think if you kind of rely on platforms like Twitter, again, it's a cliche, but you don't own your audience there. So the algorithm changes and you go from being um, the cock of the wool to a feather duster. I think that's a quote from somebody. Um, so over the last year, this is, I think, a rough spread of where my subscribers came from, mostly from Twitter, Reddit, Indie Hackers, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, OK. And we talked a lot about self-promotion. And I like to say that uh, I'm definitely a self-promoter, but I think that the best self-promoters aren't really self-promoters. So I took the time to become more or less a genuine member of all the communities I was sharing my content in. So Indie Hackers, for example, is this I absolutely love, and I'd hang out there a lot, and this is an example of how I'd promote on Indie Hackers. Someone writes, I want to get better at SaaS sales. Um, so I reply, hey Shiv, I was in your shoes this time last year, started reading a lot about the subject, here's some of the best stuff I found. Uh, linked a bunch of useful resources, and then said, I got so into it that I set up my own thing, marketing examples, where I share short, sweet, real-world examples. Um, Pour them up into it and generally think it will help you, all free. Uh, and I think that, I think I like to say that content promotion is a positive sum game. So um, I think if you, if you help other people out, like I helped Shiv out a little bit, they'll help you out. And you can't just force your stuff down people's throats. That's not really how marketing works. At least from my experience, you kind of have to be <laughs> turn it into more of a conversation. Okay, uh, I'm going to double check. We're all we're all good still. We hear you. I meant to please make this disabled. I meant okay. I'm pretty sure we're good. I'm going to rumble on like a, like like a train. <laughs> um, for then. All right. So we've talked about sharing your content. Uh, essentially, you want to find all the places where your audience hang out and 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 uh, feed it into them like the way they like to consume it. So on Twitter, that might be a thread for an article. On LinkedIn, that's a slideshow. We, we covered this. Uh, conversion, the other big thing, um, which, which is how you grow a newsletter. How do you get people to actually uh, thrive? So uh, here we go. Um, OK, so uh, let's say you've got a site with 10,000 hits uh, a week on it, and 1% of people are signing up to the newsletter at the moment. That is 100 sign-ups a week. Uh, now, if you want to turn that into 300, you've got two options. Either 
you, you turn the traffic to 30,000. Pretty hard to do. It might take a lot of advertisement, might take a couple of years of, of content marketing to sort of rank for SEO, that type of thing. Or you improve the conversion to 3%, which honestly you could probably do in a day if your site hasn't really been, been optimized or, or looked at properly. So I think conversion, there's two important things. Uh, firstly, you've got to make something people want to sign up for. So the, the mistake you see all the time is uh, B2B or just any company has this little like email thing on their website and it's like, subscribe for updates or subscribe to our newsletter, but there's no real purpose behind it. So adding this purpose is the first way of increasing that number. So a bad example is, this is more for a person, but you see it all the time on these, these websites, is I'm starting this startup newsletter, I'm writing about startups every week, blah, 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 please subscribe. And honestly, there's no way I'm subscribing to that, there's just no reason to. So um, if we write it, each week I spend 50 hours analyzing a new startup trend, I share what I learned in a five minute email report, would, like you, would love you to subscribe. Um, Purpose, like passion. Uh, another example of this, um, patch, patch.com. Their old uh, subscribe um, form on their website, subscribe to the newsletter, cliche, no one's signing up for that. So they changed it to sign up to our free houseplant parenting course and receive 10 bite sized lessons. Um, and the trick here is don't think about capturing people's emails. That's like what people say, oh, I've got to capture their emails. No, think about creating something worse worth subscribing to. So that's what Patrick done here. Essentially, it's like a lead magnet. You want to use the obvious terminology. But you really want to work on that. Um, uh, and here's mine. So back in the day, my subscribers like the one on the left. It was, why not join a weekly newsletter? No one was subscribing to it because there's just nothing to it. So over six months a year, it changed to, hey, I'm Harry. Each week, I share a new case study in my newsletter. It's short, sweet, and practical. 25,000 marks to read it, I'd love you to join. And then loads of social proof of people saying, um, this is great, I love it, I read every article, etc." And honestly, just that one tweet was 1% to 3% um, overnight. Uh, okay, and the second thing, as well as making something people want to subscribe to, is make it easy for them. So uh, here's a little video. Uh, on Mark's examples, uh, there's four ways of signing up to the newsletter. You've got the fixed navigation bar at the top of the site. You've got at the end of each article, uh, there's an, a pop-up which comes up after about 60 seconds, and there's a, a dedicated subscribe page. Um, let's play a quick video so you get you, you, see, you see it. So fixed nav bar at the top there, uh, end of each article. I write the article and I say, hey, you know, if you want to sign up to this thing, pop-up uh, pop which comes up, and subscribe page. If you go to forward slash subscribe, you'll see the, you'll see the subscribe page. Um, one sec. Um, so the key here is that from any given point on the website, you're only one click away from signing up. Uh, and honestly, I would just look at your own your own website and think, right, how could we make some small tweaks to improve conversion? One of them, which is so obvious, is just asking people to subscribe in, in human language. So at the end of your article, instead of saying something like, uh, Subscribe to the newsletter. Say, hey, I'm Janet. <laughs> I, I write two articles a month for X company. Um, I put a lot. I put everything into them. You know, not these exact words, but I'd love you to subscribe. Okay. Uh, so we've covered getting people to your site, first part of it, or getting people to see your content, first part of it, and we've covered um, conversion. But I'd be lying if I said that content wasn't really the key behind all this. So, so good content. Um, firstly, gets means more people are going to see your stuff because people are actually going to share it organically, and obviously it improves conversion because if you read a great article, there's more chance you sign up. Uh, so, so how do you write great content? Well, actually, once you, I'm not sure I got the answers to that question. It's um, yeah, there's no there's no one size like fits all solution. Where are we at? Um, I think I think one thing you can do is is actually one thing one thing I realized is that. The, the returns you get from a great piece, one great piece, far outweigh the returns from, say, 20 pieces, which are kind of okay. So this video is literally one article I wrote. Um, it was a Twitter inspiration handbook I, I put together. 
it was probably uh, two, probably a month, three weeks at least on this on this one article. Um, I, I think that, yeah, I, I think you kind of got to change your mindset slightly because when managers might say, "Hey, we've got to get this out." Uh, we've, got to, we've, got to, we've, we've got to get this out by Tuesday, and it's got to have these key words in, and um, you know, get on it. That's not really giving you the fuel to 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 actually write great content. So, if you look at marketing, how I've grew marketing examples, lots of stuff was would definitely have been rejected by by any kind of like marketing manager. I would have said to them, I want to spend about a month or two months just hanging around on marketing forums and talking to people and making friends. Um, they'd be like, nah, you, you can't do that. You've got, to, you've got to do some work. And then the other thing I'd say to them, hey, I want to write like the best article on, on landing pages out there. And I'm going to spend as long as it takes to do it. Um, and most people would say, mm, probably not. You've probably got to get something done by Tuesday. So you, you can never really create the kind of content which maybe which helped me grow, I guess. Um, all right, last thing. Um, hope, hope this has been fun. I've been a bit all over the place, but I've enjoyed it. I hope you can hear me actually. So, last thing is uh, creating loops between your your pieces of content. I think is a really underrated thing. So, when I market example started, I got traction on Twitter. That's where I kind of like I, I, a couple of people shared my my work there. A couple of founders shared my work, and it got me a bit of traction. So then, from Twitter, I take them to the newsletter, and then from the newsletter, at the end, I would say, "P.S. I'm down to connect on LinkedIn if you'd like." So that's how I kind of kickstarted my link, my LinkedIn growth. Is everyone from the newsletter would come to LinkedIn, and then on LinkedIn, I'm sharing the the slideshows, and then say at the end of that, "Hey, come to the newsletter." And then when I launched my Instagram, um, I think I probably put it in an email saying, "Hey, I've just launched the Instagram page, like where I'm going to share, share slideshows if if that's your chosen platform." So you kind of kickstart that. And it's and it's all these um, it's connecting these platforms together. You can kind of create a bit of a web, I guess, around around marketing. So to wrap up, um, how do I create? How do I? How have I built a big newsletter? Well, uh, fairly big, I guess. Um, I don't think you should be overcomplicated. You need to have a way of, of getting people to see your content, sharing strategy, um, conversion, create a newsletter people want to read. How can I make great content? How do you stand out? And then finally, loops. But how can you use Twitter to build your newsletter, which builds your LinkedIn, which builds it, like all of that stuff? Um, <laughs> there you go. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you learned something. Cheers. Thank you so much, Harry. Uh, I have a question of my own. So, one thing about your approach is that nobody else is doing what you're doing or there might be somebody that I haven't heard of, but it looks like you're the only one doing so you while everybody else is looking at AFREFs and what is the keyword volume and blah, 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 you do something else. You invented a new format. I mean, swipe files have been around, but essentially it's kind of your own thing. So how do you, how do you think about building your own formats and how did you come up with this? It was a, it's, a, it's an interesting question. I'm really flattering question. I think that I had a benefit because I had no experience when I started. So I didn't even know about HREFs what existed. I didn't even know about pet. Lazier, I'm hoping that's your surname. I, I knew how to take layer, sorry. Um, so I came at it from a totally new angle. I, I didn't know any of marketing, so I had to kind of learn it myself. And and what I realized is that the old school format was like, hey, we've got to get people to our website. That's the key. But people aren't really reading websites as much as they're reading Twitter, as much as they're reading LinkedIn. So I basically thought, how can I take over these platforms? Um, and then and then say, hey, let marketing samples exist as well. And we've got this, this newsletter. It was, a, to be honest with you, it was just a lot of trial and error. It was just a lot of fumbling around, not, it, it not working for quite a long time. Um, th there's no secret formula, really. Mm -hmm. Well, there never is. Yeah. So if I have to sum up what you said is, hey, ignorance is a bliss because since you didn't know anything, you weren't limited by things. And so you just use your creativity. Uh, and two, you kept going. You you know kept on iterating and experimenting, which is what we all need. Uh, Stuart here is asking, uh, what's the end goal of building your newsletter? <laughs> do you think what you do is scalable? Uh, good question, Stuart. So, uh, no, I, I've made very little money right now. I think that sponsorship isn't is a really uh, like if your website gets three hundred thousand hits a month, you can you can get a big email sponsor. You can make a lot of money. I have got a great sponsor, but there's just 
it, it doesn't make me <laughs> crazy money in the slightest. But I think what I have got is a very engaged email list who like the content and a social media following. So um, I'm actually uh, probably, well, I was going to do it today, but I, I had to write this, cool, this, this talk. There's a course coming out, uh, a marketing course coming out. Uh, I've made the landing page. And I'm really excited for it. It's going to be six months just grinding on this thing. And I really think that um, I can make something good. And, I, and we'll, we'll see what happens. Like, I think that I read this line from, from Johnny Wilkinson, the rugby player. And he said that um, there's two options, control or explore. This is a real kind of like Zen thing to say. But um, I'm not trying to control anything. I, I'm literally making it up as I go along and, and just hoping, not hoping, but like, uh, I don't really know what the, what the right wording is, but I've got the <laughs> I've got the ideas in, in my head, and um, I'm I'm just going to explore and see what happens. That's a really yeah. bad answer to this question. Sorry, Stuart. Uh, it's good. As a modern day philosopher, I like it. Uh, I love this question here by Viral. How many how hours did you fail until you didn't? How many hours until you hit 10k subscribers? Well, to be honest with you, Market Examples actually, it, it, it did all right early on. Before Market Examples, I made about two or three businesses which, which, which failed for months and months and months and months. That was where I kind of learned stuff. And with Market Examples, I launched with a couple of articles, really one or, one or two articles, very early on. Um, the site wasn't built properly. As you saw, the, the subscriber page was awful at the start. Um, I got lucky because... What happened was I wrote about Nomad Lists SEO, uh, this big travel website. The founder of, yeah, of Nomad Lists, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> the founder of of Nomad Lists shared um, the, the article on his social media. A guy called Peter Levels, and he has hundred thousand followers, something like that. So that got me my first hundred subscribers, um, and I think that kind of came from I don't know, right place, right time. Like you have to. I, I was in a couple of groups with these kind of people, so you, you can you can share. I think making friends is so underrated if you're trying to get early traction. I I hundred percent agree. Find people, you know, your own size, grow together. That's how I built so many of my my, my own things. A lot of questions here. So, damn, we've lost. Uh, back. He's not sure what happened. He's back. Uh, Michael is asking, how long are you spending on each piece of content? Uh, so in the early days, I was trying to do one a day, and I quickly realized that the returns from this content, it, it, it's, it's literally having the best thing on a topic. So I know Pep wrote about brand differentiation, spent ages on it. And I think that that's where all the value is. If you can come up with the definitive piece. So originally, I was writing like really short, snappy examples. Um, and that was good at start because I had quantity and I was kind of like learning what worked and what and what didn't work. But now I've got an audience. The goal is every single time just write the best thing on this topic. That's it. That it's it's I can't. Um, if you drop the if you're like a musician, it's really pretentious to say. But if you treat yourself like a musician and you release two bad albums, your career's done. No one's gonna listen to you again. So you want to just keep. I don't know. Like it's a really backwards way potentially thinking about it, but. If you can get into the mindset of like, look, this is gonna be the best thing on this topic. I'm gonna spend as long as it takes to make it the best thing. You'll get a reputation for for, for doing that. And I'm not saying I've got that reputation, but that's where I'm trying to go. Dude, uh, when I started CXL as a blog 10 years ago, my goal was to write the best article in the world about whatever topic I was writing on. And this, the mindset really helped me. And also, you know, this content marketing built CXL. So I think there's something to it, having that mindset. Whether it's you know whether you succeed or not, at least you reach for it. Um, mm -hmm. Thomas Walker, Mr. Tommy, I presume, is asking here. Can you talk more about your early traction on Twitter? Like, what were you doing at the outset? All right. So, I think that my Twitter site is probably one of the worst to to look at for actually maybe, maybe inspiration. Basically, this guy called Steve Shoger, uh, designer. He started taking design. Um, which was written in blog posts, YouTube videos, and he turned these things into into quick tips. So he would he would create a little tip where he would annotate stuff, and he'd say, "Hey, look, change the box shadow from this to this, and this is the impact." I saw his account on Twitter explode, so I thought to myself, "I'm all right at design. I can do this for for marketing. I can take this format 
of basically making these insane images. Um, and that's how I got all my, my, my Twitter traction. The early days, I was, I'd share the, the, I made all these quick tips, I'd share them on Facebook, Slack, and then I'd say, people would say, hey, this is cool. And I'd say, all right, well, you know, there's a Twitter account which makes all these. Um, so that's how I got the ball rolling on Twitter. Also, I think don't be afraid to spend ad money. I think that if you're, if you're putting the work into, I would spend eight hours on one tip easily. And if you're putting the work into that, um, put budget behind it and say, look, this is going to get us 500 followers because we're going to target, I don't know, um, Pep's audience or whatever. And you're going to build your account that way. I didn't actually really have that luxury, but if I was doing it all over again, 100%, I would, I would spend ages making an amazing tip, find like five people who audience I want and just run follower ads to them with, with this great tip. They follow you, you just repeat, repeat, repeat. Um, also, don't be afraid to post stuff twice. Like, it's it's a bit of a boring tip, but most people, let, let's say your account explodes, 50,000 to 90,000, kind of happened to me. Um, the people who have joined the last 40,000 haven't seen the stuff you spent literally weeks on. So it's not the worst thing in the world. I mean, to, to just to just repost, uh, yeah. that's what I think at least. I mean, there's a lot more to say on Twitter. Uh, they, yeah. uh, multiple people are here asking about, uh, about your audience. So how do you define your target audience so like who is the profile what's the profile of your subscriber and do you have a specific person in mind when you're creating the, your content uh my subscriber is is people who want to get their hands dirty it's marketers like I, strategy is important in marketing 100 percent it is but i feel like you sometimes watch these podcasts or whatever clubhouse chats all that and people are just chatting so much about hey you gotta do the strategy it, it doesn't it's just nothing there's nothing behind it so my subscriber is someone who kind of gets that like okay uh this is actually practically how you set up uh how, how you how you um how you write a landing page that converts we've got numbers we've got examples we've got examples we've got more examples of this and it's it's yeah that's the person it also it's it's, it's entrepreneurs as well as marketers it's um it's like uh it's kind of like uh it's like a buffet you go to the buffet and you get the um hand food whatever it's called i'm using the wrong words but like you go to the buffet and you um you get the chips off the side they're already in your mouth it's people who like it easy that's what it is like i try and make it easy for people um yeah marketers founders who want to be who, who like practicality that's what i'd say cool uh, Kisha here is asking, how do you manage your time to make sure you contribute to each community and you know you create content at the same time? How do you balance that? I haven't worked it out, Kisha. I haven't worked it out. I'm trying my best still. I mean, it, it's a complete mess. It really is. I, I'm, I've started like I try and I try and dedicate the weekends to messaging people and emails. If I if I do emails first thing in the morning, my day spirals out of control in a negative way. So I got this from someone called Josh Waitskin. He said that um, work pre-input. And what I think he meant by that is like, can I do the creative work I do um, without getting bombarded with, hey, Harry, your subscriber form is broken. Hey, you've got a typo here. Hey, so so I, I try and have like five, six, seven hours where I'm just I'm just no distractions trying to trying to write really the best stuff I can. And then it's like to say, then the day descends. And it's OK, I can now just hang out on on. Um, on a webinar and just you know that all that kind of thing or i can reply to messages or i can fix bugs yeah uh two questions here about if you do it all yourself or do you outsource any part of your uh work or design or i do it all myself uh i do it all myself i yeah there's no there's no one <laughs> without and is that uh, because you just uh, like to do it on yourself or because you're just early stages and uh, it just doesn't make economic sense? I haven't, no, I couldn't hire someone if I tried that, to be honest with you. But hopefully when I make more money, uh, the first person I would hire would probably be someone to help with communi like communication because um, it's, it's, there's a lot of messages you get on, which is honestly amazing. But I'm someone who doesn't actually... I don't text my friends back that often. <laughs> so to get the, um, I like creating the content. That's the thing. That's why there's no community yeah. right now, at least. Um, yeah. 
All right, uh, let's uh, end with a more inspirational advice here. So Gagan is asking here, what advice will you give to small business entrepreneurs with little marketing experience to increase audience engagement? Uh, I would say that, I'm gonna just give you a quote because I haven't got the words. I would say that there are no adults. Everybody is making it up as they go along. So figure out yourself and, and do it. Um, honestly, no, I, I came at this from a view of just, just um, let's post on Reddit and let's get told that you can't post on Reddit. And then let's post on another subreddit and then let's get a load of up. Like th there was, there's no real process to this. There really isn't. And I think that, I mean, practically what I would do is, uh, I can't quite remember what his business was, but like I would, I would, um, hey, run some ads, try it out, St start a newsletter. I don't know, that's actually really bad advice. I, I, without knowing the business, it's hard to give you practicality stuff, but um, we're all making it up, including Pep. I'm sure amen, amen. Well, thank you so much, Harry. Uh, everyone, marketingexamples.com, go subscribe. I'll see you on the, on the internet somewhere, man. Thanks a lot, really appreciate it. Uh, cheers, have a great session, guys.